Listening to this on a pod, in a pod, not a pod, near a pod. It's it's a pod podcast. Um, it's a conception. Uh, I am joined as always um, by uh, West Virginia coal miner Allison and West Virginia coal miner Chris. Uh, both available on the internet. If you'd like to uh, find them, head over to binaryjazz.us. Find uh, find information about all of us. I'm Gary, and. Uh, We've got an exciting topic coming up. Can't wait to find out what it is. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I actually have the topic. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Was this the point where I bring it up already? Wow. Okay. Apparently, I don't know. I'm just Weird. letting Gary roll with his 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 role. You know, usually we do like this long intro. Like, if you're new to the show, <laughs> I don't want to risk it this time. Let's just go. We don't care if you're new to the show. If you're new to the show, listen to another episode and figure out how it works. <laughs> <laughs> Sit down, figure out how it works. Join us, won't you? Yeah, we'd love to have you on Slack or Twitter or our website. Or My introduction also... would basically be like, oh, why, hello there. I didn't see you come in. <laughs> <laughs> and also donate and help us uh, pay for transcriptions. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, somewhere yeah. on the website, I'm sure there's a donate link. Yeah. We're really bad at advertising. I was thinking about that yesterday. I was like, you know, we're just really bad at this. I just don't um, know if we're the self-promotion type of people. Yeah. <laughs> because even when, we things, even when we do things that sharing makes total sense, we're very quiet about it. We aren't self-promoters. If you like the show and like to promote us, we'd appreciate it. Yeah. Promote us on our behalf. <laughs> However, we're curious as to how you got here since we're not self-promoters. Glad to have you. <laughs> um, okay, the topic this week, which I like because, I don't know, well, you'll see. <laughs> uh, you'll see, uh, is the Ben Franklin effect. The yes, ben that Franklin. Ben Franklin. Huh. I... Don't feel like I'm, I'm a Ben sure Franklin expert. In a, in a familiar way, but Benjamin Franklin. <laughs> oh, God, I thought you meant someone else entirely. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, I'm familiar with, with Benjamin Franklin. But how uh, familiar are you? Because <laughs> the Benjamin Franklin I, effect could be so many things. Yeah. See, that's the thing. What's I know Benjamin that he Franklin was, known for? Uh, he was pretty eccentric. Um, you know, the key and the kite thing, probably, what he's best known for, right? Um, uh, he was best known for being buds with the founding fathers and not actually being a politician himself and doing lots of crazy experimentation, uh, as noted by the key on the kite thing. Um, <laughs> I like, he also, can we dive more into this key and kite thing? Because I feel like that's, that's worth a description. <laughs> Cause I think we all have a vague idea of what we're trying to describe. You fly, well, he, a kite, you fly a kite in a lightning storm to test that uh, electricity, the lightning will, will hit the highest metal point. Um, uh, he also has the quote, I believe it, it's Ben Franklin. If it's not Ben Franklin, someone else said it. And it's described to Ben Franklin. Um, beer is proof that God loves us and wants us to be happy. <laughs> uh, he's also the only... Um, He's also the only person who wasn't a president that is on uh, American currency. Hmm. He wrote an Except awful lot. Except for Susan lot. B. Anthony. I, on, on the paper currency. Paper money. I feel like nobody takes this today, huh? the Susan B. Anthony thing seriously. <laughs> Sadly. Well, yeah. Who's on the $2 bill? Kanye West. That's a good Is that right? I don't think that's right. <laughs> I don't think that doesn't seem right to me. Um, <laughs> it feels chronologically odd, but I'm I can go with it. <laughs> Maybe. 
feel like I had two dollar bills when I was younger, though. I definitely before Kanye was a thing. <laughs> I... Well, uh, Kanye is a recent addition. Hmm. Who was on it before Kanye? Some dude. Martha Stewart. Yeah, um, Martha Stewart. Sorry, yeah, boy, not some dude. Some dude. Boy, Martha Stewart. What whatever happened to her? She's still doing stuff. She's still doing stuff. <laughs> She's out of she's out of prison now. She's doing stuff. She's on talk shows and writes books and does the Martha Stewart thing, except without a television show. She's nice. good friends with uh, Snoop Dogg, Snoop Lion. Perhaps the best business collaboration known to the world in the past I, years. He's, I like to think it's more than business. He's I like to think that they're just pals. He's legitimately Snoop Dogg. He's not Snoop Lion. He's he has said that Snoop Lion was a I don't know if he, I don't know how he put it exactly. It wasn't, it wasn't a phase, but it was like, it was like a, a role he was putting on and then he took it off. Cause he's, he's on other things. He's got a game show I found randomly on, I don't remember what channel, maybe Viceland. I don't know, but he's got some game show, um, which is, we watched and is dumb. And he's, he's got a whole thing. He, he's a guest on some kids show that my kids were watching the other day. On Netflix, Netflix original. Ask the he's, something box. I mean, my smart. favorite, my my favorite thing about Snoop Dogg is when he does the um the nature show stuff. Have you guys I seen? Think I missed that. Oh, no. I, I, it's, worth, it's worth a watch. <laughs> yeah, find it on YouTube because I don't know if it's ever been on an actual. I don't know if it's just a YouTube thing. I don't know if like he's partnering with something on on YouTube specifically. I think it started off as a as a bit on like uh, some late night show, but like he'll he'll they'll you know how they do the nature shows and it has like David Attenborough and he's like describing what's happening in the scene, whatever. Well, they they mute the sound or they remove the the over overdubbing of the you know British narrator and they put Snoop Dogg on instead and Snoop Dogg has never seen this stuff before or maybe he has who knows who knows what Snoop Dogg does um but he'll he'll do the narration but he'll be like oh what's he doing now oh look at that snake oh that snake's gonna get that rat oh get him get him get that rat yeah you don't miss with that snake rat Oh, you're gonna get away. Oh, you're gonna get out of his mouth. You're, oh, look at that rat. He's coming out of the snake's mouth. The snake doesn't even know what hit him. I think I'm ready for intros now. <laughs> <laughs> Can I redo him? Professional, professional Snoop Dogg impersonator. But... Oh, that was fascinating. <laughs> yeah, you should, you should really watch the Snoop Dogg version because it's much better than what I did. Uh, I'm gonna have to. It it ramps up the narrative of, of a nature documentary quite a bit though. The adrenaline it it's it pumping a lot more. It's, there's a lot more excitement than than like the dry monotone of watching yeah, an animal in its native habitat. There's there's one where there's one where there's like a I don't know if it's like an emu or something, but it's like an emu emu versus being attacked by a crocodile. An emo emu emo emu. <laughs> <laughs> Um, there's an emu being attacked by a crocodile and like the emu like kicks the crocodile in the face and tries like it's just there's a whole thing and like and the funny thing is like he, he like he'll he'll be on the side of like the predator but then like when the when the the prey animal um starts fighting back then he'll immediately switch sides and be like yeah you don't mess with him <laughs> <laughs> Choose a lot. were you all big um crocodile hunter fans back in the day uh, no, I did not watch Crocodile Hunter. Uh, I had, uh, I think it was my sophomore year in college. Mm. Maybe. Yeah, sophomore year in college. My roommate and I, I mean, it was like every rerun, every new episode, we would get pizza and beer, watch Crocodile Hunter. Wow. And not like ironically, like we were just highly entertained. Love that. <laughs> yeah. I like, I'm glad that you pointed out that it, there was nothing ironic about it. It's just full serious. Um. <laughs> Miss shows like well, that. I mean, the other show that was popular on my campus was SpongeBob at the time, and mm. yeah, and that was like people were watching that because it was oh my God, stupid. Yeah, no, I uh, Iron Chef was the equivalent for me. Mm. Ooh, you had a bunch of Iron Chef too. Yeah, Iron yeah. Chef marathons. 
Is that still on? TV used to be really good. Uh, there was an American version for a while. I don't think that that one exists anymore. I don't think Iron Chef is still on. The, um, the reruns, though. I mean, you could watch them forever. Yeah. Evergreen. Evergreen material. I mean, because I feel like three minutes in, you're like, I don't know if I've seen this episode or not. I just I'm not sure what that ingredient is. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, the, the best part is, is... Oh my gosh, that's our <laughs> podcast. We're the Iron Chef of Podcasts. We don't know what the ingredient is until the show starts. <laughs> We are the Iron Chef of podcasts. Um, yeah, then the best part has always been the the host or master, whatever his name is, taking a big bite of uh, bell pepper in the intro. Yes. Master Wu, yeah, <laughs> Master Wu. That's a crossover I want to see. Ninjago, Ninjago, Iron, Ninjago Chef. And Iron Chef. I yeah, can probably, that I can see that happening. Can you can you talk to your um, children about a stop motion version of that for me, please? Oh yeah, yeah, that'd be great. We would get them a dozen views. It would be like it would be like um, sausage is the or or bread would be the secret ingredient. You know, like one of the pre-made uh, Lego uh, food like of of which there a are plastic five. turkey leg. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> coffee cup. <laughs> <laughs> Tyler, Tyler got a set a while back that had all sorts of like fun little stuff like that. I'm trying to remember what other foods there were besides oh carrots. Carrots yeah, is one. Carrots. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, that little sausage, he probably has four of those, the Lego <laughs> sausage and the bun that it goes in. He made a, um, a Lego hot dog food truck as a result of that. He's pretty excited about it. Business savvy. <laughs> You're like, I've got, just... four of these, I've got four of these hot dogs. They've got to go. <laughs> <laughs> I only need one. I'm going to sell the other three, but I need somewhere to sell them out of. <laughs> he, Legos, it's just so much fun to watch him using. I love Legos. So good. Yeah. If I had more space, that would probably be something I would well, invest ben in. Ben Franklin, famously inventor of Legos. <laughs> Benjamin Lego Franklin. <laughs> yeah. But how does that yeah. tie into the Ben Franklin effect? Is it the making of the Legos that is the Ben Franklin effect? Or is it the inventing of stuff that is the Ben Franklin effect? I like to think the Ben Franklin effect is um, he didn't bathe frequently. <laughs> so he would walk into him and people were like, do you smell that? That's the Ben Franklin effect. <laughs> and everybody leaves. That's the effect. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, he, for some reason, I think that he was like, hmm, he had something to do with education. He was either for or against it. <laughs> Those are the two options. I mean, <laughs> maybe he was both. They just get to get all the bases covered. <laughs> Well, he wasn't much of a politician, so he couldn't have been both. <laughs> Maybe he was a politician, and that's why he chose to be both. Or uh, chose not to be both. Or chose not to be a politician. What? I don't know what I'm saying. Oh, bifocals. He's the inventor of bifocals, right? And this is significant because... Uh, the because ben people Franklin. can see near and far with one pair of glasses. The Ben Franklin effect. Look at you sitting here with your perfect vision. How dare you? <laughs> do you wear contacts no okay no i have i have keratoconus though which is when your eyeball is shaped like a, a cone carrot oh we went over this it's a harry potter spell <laughs> yeah harry. keratoconus <laughs> that's right eyeballs go bzzz. chris was hexed at a very early age yes unfortunately. but not so like strongly hexed just like mildly hexed yeah so thinking about like glasses right um and just poor vision in general we would be terrible hunters oh i wouldn't thank good well right thank goodness we were born in a time we were born in you know i would be run over right. by a herd of horses or something even then uh, even then. now without hunting it's it can be it can be rough if it's raining <laughs> that's true that's or true. nighttime that's when i bust out the contacts hmm. Hey, I was thinking about um, the Ben Franklin effect. I went, no, um, I've, I've not thought about that very often in my life. Um, <laughs> once, as a matter of fact, today. Um, I went to an art museum on um, uh, Saturday and there was like this um, kid's section and they had like, this drinking vessel and it was a bowl. And I was thinking like, did the guy that first, I'm assuming it was a guy, because it was history, right? 
women didn't exist <laughs> until because history until is suffrage. For men. Well, yeah, I mean, women didn't didn't exist until fifty years ago. Until nineteen seventy two. Yeah, uh, seventy two was it? Maybe yes. When the um, first woman got a job. It's so fascinating. I don't know how we as a species survive without women until then. Um, but the individual that was like, hey, how about a drinking glass or like a cup instead of a bowl? Like it will have a lower propensity to spill because the center of gravity is more contained. Where people like, look at that moron drinking out of that tall, skinny thing instead of a bowl. And he spilled less beverage, right? I mean, I don't know. I feel like that was like a really risky move, but now glasses are the norm and we don't, we, have, we rarely drink out of bowls. One yes. coffee you drink out of a bowl, you know? Well, look, those gigantic cappuccinos. That that's people true. Bowl of cheese. I mean, that's, that's probably it, yeah. I can't think of any other examples. Maybe when I finish my cereal in the morning, I'll, I'll chug the milk. You know, I don't, I don't know. I mean, the drinking out of a bowl thing really did. I do like your angle on it, though. Like, look at that jerk over there. That's like, what is he doing? Also, that the explanation is like very scientific. Like, that was the reasoning, not just like, hey, I made the sides taller and like look at this weird shape but you were like no no the center of gravity is different like it was like a whole plan well if like, you think his tough. sales pitch to to the other people were <laughs> it's much different so it had to i mean so it had to have happened like post post isaac newton when we understood gravity because you would not have a center of it until yeah well there would be no center of gravity until we understood gravity was a thing right so everyone drank out of bowls until after isaac newton history according to gary <laughs> and that my friends is the ben franklin point, I would like to, at this point i would like to remind our listeners that nothing we say is true <laughs> some of it some of it probably is but accidentally <laughs> accidentally and incidentally and that's um, why that's why we don't post a bibliography of <laughs> that's why in the show notes you'll never see and kanye west became the face of the two dollar bill in 2005 i'm gonna google that later on I, I'm still not sure about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the, the Ben Franklin effect is probably not, like in this case, effect is probably not like a physics thing, right? It's probably not like the effect is, um, I don't know, they, probably not like, um, you know, like when you fill like a water glass and it has that like, you know, dome on top, the water, it's like surface tension. What's that effect called? I don't know. Um, or conversely, like when water is in a glass and it looks up the side. Anyway, it's not a physics effect. It's, it has to be like a, uh, sociological effect. I don't know. It has to be like, you should know thin. by now that I don't confirm or deny any of your, Oh, I know. I'm just trying to talk myself into believing something that Benjamin <laughs> Franklin, um, It's a rousing morning. <laughs> I liked it. That's the uh, that's the uh, the chant that is sung after uh, Rail Salt Lake scores a goal. Oh, nice. Are they playing today, or is that your ringtone? That's my ringtone. Yeah. Do you need to take that? We can mute. No. Yeah. <laughs> I've been getting random calls from uh, New Jersey and uh, what else? Who else has been calling me? Um, anyway, no, I don't need to take it because I don't basically okay. answer the phone ever. Um, it's like a Jersey, Russian plot to get us to not use our phones, right? New Jersey, Wisconsin, Nevada, all just- I have right. one. That's like a I, local number. I blame it changes it on, digit, last digit every time. I blame it on uh, the fact that, that elections are coming up. Uh. I, I assume that it's like politically but they they don't leave messages so i i i decide my 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 justification is if you don't leave a message you're not worth talking so if you if you didn't leave a message you obviously didn't want to actually talk to me so i you're dead to me and i'm i'm not going to answer the phone and not even a, a garbage recorded message either not even a garbage report recorded message that's why i think it's like uh like political action groups trying to vote for some bullshit. yeah Although it's weird that they would be trying to get me to vote for some bullshit uh, calling me from New Jersey or Nevada or Wisconsin, but you know, whatever. That's, not, that's not that weird. Yeah, right. Our, our, um, our area codes really like useful this day and age. 
or is it a room seven ten, ten digit number? It's vaguely useful. That's the Ben Franklin effect. Huh. <laughs> when things are vaguely useful. Yes. When when you yes. can justify a kind of use for something, but uh, you cannot assume that it is always the case. That's the Ben Franklin effect. Like, where's your where's your house key on that kite? Why? <laughs> I'll never lose it as long as I can see that kite. It sucks when I'm near trees, but otherwise, I know where my house key is at all times. All times. That's vaguely. Yeah, that's the Ben Franklin effect. Um, <laughs> Wait, I thought there's a lot about Ben Franklin I'm supposed to know that I don't. I uh, there, he was an interesting there, there person, are and I don't know why. Things about Ben Franklin that you're supposed to know. Uh, I think he's one of those people, though, that it's safe to say that maybe unless you've read like a full biography or something, that there's elements, there's layers, there's a lot going on. Well, I mean, I didn't know half of the things about Alexander, Alexander Hamilton until I saw the play. Yeah. I was like, oh, that's cool. Hmm. <laughs> um, maybe that's right. Kind of is humans trying to influence weather. Maybe. Uh, uh, you can theorize that, but I don't think that, that that's the Ben Franklin effect. Okay. And the reason I don't think that's the Ben Franklin effect because, is because I don't think he would have had the technology to, in any way, influence weather whatsoever. So I don't think that there could be he an effect. He threw a key into the sky and captured electricity. He threw a key. He was like a superhero. That's not exactly influencing weather. That's Where was that lightning going to strike had he not thrown that key into the sky? Somewhere else. This weather influenced. That lightning bolt was an undecided voter. And he made a phone call from New Jersey via a key attached to a kite. Yeah, I'm not an undecided voter. I'm Boom. very excited. There we are. <laughs> You're not waffling? Yeah. None of no. That. No. <laughs> I'm shocked to hear that. <laughs> This is my shocked voice. <laughs> I'm shocked. That is shocking. Is that what Ben said? Yes, that's the Ben Franklin effect. Shocked. Dude, you were flying a kite in a lightning storm. What did you expect? And he, got, and he was shocked by the reaction of the... Didn't he have like a metal wire attached or something as well to the key? I like mean... It was, the key was grounded. It wasn't just like there was a key on a string. The... I believe. The... the Urban legend that I know and love is that he got electrocuted by said key on kite. And if the key was on a string on a kite, then it would not conduct electricity so that he could have gotten electrocuted. So I would assume that there is some metal con or conductive material that, that was the key was attached to. But I, I mean, I wasn't there. <laughs> wow. Well, thank goodness he didn't that's die. That's was exactly what bill. someone would say if they were there. Five dollar bill? What what is he on? He's on a bill, right? Is that what you said? Yeah. What is he on? Uh, Benjamin. Hundred dollar oh, bills, y'all. Oh, I think. Yeah, I don't know what those look like. Apparently, <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen that. That's like when someone was telling me that the hundred dollar bill in Canada smelled like maple syrup, and I was just like, I haven't had one in my possession to smell, and also I'm not in the habit of smelling my. <laughs> My paper money is dirty. <laughs> you could roll it in a tube and smell the inside of it and run for mayor. It's true. Or premier of the province. There you go. I feel like your response should have been more like a as opposed to a sigh. Well, low-hanging fruit. <laughs> wow. Yeah, there's some, uh, there's some inside politics. That's a nice way of putting it. <laughs> Uh, ben Franklin effect. Are we still on this? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Have we ever on this? I mean, that is the topic. I'm sorry. Today, yes. So yes. Yes. Because um, I also, yeah. I didn't, I actually didn't check to see if we had listener questions. I think we still have some Allison ones stockpiled. Oh, uh, we have Allison ones and we have one listener question. That's exciting. Is it from Bodie McVoteface? No, it's not from Bodie McVoteface or Fakey McFakerson. <sighs> oh, that's who I was thinking of. Yeah. I don't know why. Sorry, <laughs> Fakey. <laughs> Midterm elections on your brain, and that's the Ben Franklin effect. <laughs> and we're what? We're like 60 days out, right? Yeah. Ish? Something. No, they're in November, right? They're in November. We're, we're in September. In September. Happening. Yeah. September is happening, people. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, with or without you. It's like but with you. Now. But 
Yeah, with or without your attention, September is happening. We'll wake you up when it ends. My birthday is often on election day because it's November 8th. So I have that also lucky, like the entire country celebrates with me. In fact, in fact, two years ago on my birthday, I was given a president and it was not the one I wanted. That was my birthday present. Did you, did you try and take it back? There's no return. return? Like this is... I tried, but they said I couldn't take it back. <laughs> what is the return policy? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we'll find out. <laughs> We're working on the return. I mean, the return policy is still going through. Yeah. God. We, it's just, everything is so bizarre. I don't want to dig into politics in this show because, ugh, but everything is so effing bizarre right now. I really was hoping <gasps> for, for a female president on my birthday. Yeah. That would be a nice. It would be a nice birthday present. Well, I mean, you already I'll get see the, what I can do. You get the sticker that says you voted. That's kind of the I was going to say, oh, I, I got one for the top primaries top. last Tuesday, and I was going to try and turn my laptop around and show you. I clearly need more coffee. Because <laughs> you stuck it to your <laughs> laptop? Spinning it, like, look quick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't get the sticker because we all vote by mail in Utah. Oh, right. Yeah. I feel like we've had this discussion. Like a state mandate type thing. Yeah. I can't vote by mail because my vote doesn't count. Yep. Because <laughs> your signature is wrong. Um, there is a, um, they're collecting signatures to get, um, uh, I don't even know what it is. In fact, like Florida is a uh, closed primary state. So mm. whatever reg party you register with, you can vote in, you know, party specific stuff and then there are like a handful of like nonpartisan um, options and uh yeah so hopefully in november we can get rid of that make it open primaries and what did what was the name of the um was it like the sunglow law or what was the made sunshine everything? laws, <laughs> the sunshine laws. Yeah. <laughs> made everything sound so so much better Mm. That's why, yeah, I, you know, it's been done, but I feel like it would be fun to look on a fairly regular basis and see what's like the weirdest Florida story happening. I need it's to make sure done, but, that. But can it be too done when you have such good, good stories coming out of there? That's fair. <laughs> That's fair. Well, we have like, I don't know, Canada has weird stories too, because there's always the like, meanwhile in Canada, and it makes it seem like everything here is just like very just like non-problematic very, very maple syrup uh focused just like a bear like like a bear got its paw stuck in the jar and you're like all right like no okay we have real things happening here too here's, here's the thing with florida stories right like every florida story that i read i think i wonder if that's and there's always someone i know that like i would put <laughs> in the story mentally like there's always someone that would fit that bill right um and I mean, it's sometimes, often someone different. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes people I work with, sometimes people I went to school with, but I'm like, I wonder if that's dot, dot, dot. And I have to look and see who it was that did something Florida-worthy, you know, usually. I mean, there are the rare, rare occasions. Like, I, don't, I think when there was a person on bath salts eating people's faces in Miami, like, no one came to mind that I know in that case. But most of the rest of them, you know, take an alligator in a convenience store, yeah. I know a couple of people that might do that. I think because they always they always involve some sort of creature or something that the rest of the states or, isn't familiar with. Or so. running away from police naked. Yeah. Now, see, I would be that person in someone else's story. <laughs> like, <laughs> is that Gary? <laughs> I wonder what Gary's up to. Is he running from the police naked? No, no, not him. <laughs> not this time, anyway. Gary, have you ever run away from police naked? <laughs> I've never went from the police naked. Yeah. So clothed? there's no. <laughs> uh, I ran away from campus security clothed. Um, Why? What did you do? Yeah, I don't know that that necessarily counts. Campus security doesn't count. I mean, like, yeah, rent a cop. Um, I was, <laughs> I was off roading on campus <laughs> in a Ford station wagon. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's probably a lot more to the story than that, but that's the, that's the crux of it. And so wait, were you running away from them or you were driving away from them? 
uh, I parked the car. I took to, took to my to the feet. <laughs> took, took to the road. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I the thought that I would be a lot more mobile on my feet than in a Ford station wagon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I left campus and uh, hid in, a, in an apartment complex for a while. Damn. Badass. Who knew? That sounds very worthy of college. The Ben Franklin effect. <laughs> Actually, that was probably had something to do with what Ben Franklin said about beer, but you know. <laughs> there were only two blindfolded people in the back of the station wagon. Oh, no. Only two blindfolded people. <laughs> How many were in the trunk? <laughs> well, I mean, that, that was, that, no, they were in the, the station wagon's only had a trunk, like the entire box. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, right. so that's where they were. That's where they were. One of them was a lineman for the football team. <laughs> I don't think that you put a linebacker from the football team in blindfolds in the back of your station wagon. I don't believe it. One of them was a lineman for the football team. Yeah. 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 He was. My fraternity brother. Of course, this was like a frat thing, obviously. Uh, I see. I see. It all adds up. It all makes sense. Well, that makes sense to you. (laughs) Well, as much as... I haven't figured it out years later. (laughs) As much as these conversations ever make sense. Yeah. Well, we reached the time where we've gotten the 10 minute warning. So I think that means that it's- So what is the Ben Franklin effect? Time to define the the topic. The Ben Franklin effect is when, um, it is a, I guess, yeah, psychological, sociological thing where um, if it has to do with cognitive dissonance, where it's basically like if someone doesn't like you or you perceive them as not liking you and you ask them for a favor, they're more likely to start liking you, basically. So like someone who's performed a favor for someone else is more likely to do another favor if they've received a favor from that person. Because basically your concept of yourself is that you're only, you help people because you like them. And so if someone asks you for a favor and then you do it, you have to like change your perception of it. And you're like, oh, I must like them because I like did them this favor. Why is that associated with Ben Franklin? Because there's this great quote. Where did it go? Because everybody hated him, and yet he asked them all for favors, and then they strangely like started liking him. Yeah, in this biography, there's this guy that he that like really didn't like him at all, and um, so as a result, he but like he asked if he could borrow a book from him, and he borrowed the book and then returned it, and then after he did that the guy started liking him and like basically treating him with respect all of a sudden. And basically like he that has once done you a kindness will be more ready to do you another than he whom you yourself have obliged. And it's hmm. just attributed. It's, and also like, I guess, I think psychologists also use it to like, the reverse is true as well, where it's like people who have done horrible things sort of, create a cognitive dissonance and like dehumanize or whatever to justify their actions. Right. So it's like, we don't want to, we don't want to think that we're doing things for people if we hate them because then our perception of ourself is, is like not synonymous with how we like to think of ourselves. So it's like, Oh, well, we must like that person. If I lent them that book, like I'm, I must, I must like them on some level. <laughs> I don't lend books huh. to people I hate. <laughs> And this strangely topical, right? To to modern to modern affairs, current affairs. Ouch! I'm right here. Just call me out. Not you, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I I feel like that's always an appropriate response, though. <laughs> what? Not yeah, you? Yeah. So it's, it's like a foot. No, in the like door. I'm right here. If you want people to like you, and that they maybe don't like you already, ask them for a favor and see how things pan out. Oh. I like that. No, I like that. It's probably a, it's probably a, a cool approach to, like, invert, you know, mediocre feelings with colleagues. Well, yeah, it's supposed to be. It's apparently supposed to be really good with um, tension among coworkers. Was one of the things that I kept finding, which is interesting, where they were like strategies on like if you're not getting along with your coworkers for some reason and you can't ask them for them. a favor, <laughs> yeah. they can do something for you, and then they're indebted forever. Then their feelings of obligation will will transform into feelings of somewhat vague appreciation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
And it's that somewhat vague appreciation that's the Ben Franklin. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I think I just read it like wheeled lightning bolts. <laughs> I mean, like the X Men. All I need is a key and a kite. Yeah. Oh, just a key and a kite. Influence the weather. We do have a question, a listener question from Kevin. Ooh, Kevin. Who asks? I don't know who Kevin is. What would Unless be I better, do. What would be better if it had wheels on it? I, I feel like this is too general. No, it's because, not. Because basically, I think anything would be better with wheels. <laughs> um, no, a laptop campfire would not be better, better with, with wheels. wheels on that, it. Just roll that laptop. Okay, so no campfires, but what other, what other right. thing? I don't know. Right. Campfire with wheels would be pretty awesome. <laughs> You're like, let's pretty horrifying. Let's do that. Sharks, sharks would not be great with wheels. Sharks would be awesome with wheels. We have different definitions of awesome. <laughs> um, like cooking utensils. Like I don't need a, I don't need wheels on a knife. <laughs> you know, that seems dangerous. How, how, like, how else? How else would you rogue. pass it to somebody at the end of the table, <laughs> other than rolling it down the table? Yeah, like I or think like, throwing it seems a lot more sensical. Salt and pepper, <laughs> or like a bowl with with wheels, where you can just like instead of you know those gigantic salad bowls at family dinners that everyone's just like massive yeah. passing. If it was just on wheels, you could just kind of shove it down the table and knock everything else off. <laughs> there would I need guess, to be like so, there need to be like a path in the middle of the table where it's like designated as the area where you roll stuff down to the other end of the table. Yeah. It's like a like a lazy Susan, but like right a pathway, a freeway, a lazy freeway. It's like a lazy yeah, lazy yeah. We basically yeah. just need a train based food system on this. Stage. I mean, the best part. Of I was thinking mag maglev. I, I went to a sushi place one time in San Francisco, and it had one of those like those things that where it has the sushi's on the floating barge that floats yes. by. Yeah, you. like that is the best invention ever all food should come on a little floating boat that goes by you're like yes i want that one i will take this i'll take that one i i feel like that would be a great way to sell more desserts at any restaurant just keep dessert floating past tables all the time oh all the time order what I you would, want and then i'm gonna have two desserts i, I might just eat dessert so much more money food. at restaurants in general if they did that with all their food because if i can see it and i'm like no no that's the one i want yeah I will have yeah. more. Hmm. I want um, some key lime pie today. On wheels. <laughs> On uh, little lime yeah. wheels. <laughs> oh, that's adorable. It's like, look, look at a little race car. <laughs> and like the, the, the cut of the, the pie, like from the side would look like it has a spoiler. Exactly. Oh, now I want that, new wallpaper on my computer. That Internet, pie would happen. sell like hotcakes or like pie. Or yeah, I mean, I mean, that's why wheels and everything would be better. Everything. Temporarily. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Such a naysayer I'm not, I'm not got this wheel wheels. thing. I know. Such strong opinion. I mean, just think, of, think about, think about, like, all the friction we've now introduced. Like, now you need, like, ways to alleviate friction on everything, right? So now you've got, like, graphite or, like, grease or oil in every bearing on everything, so it rolls easily. Like, this is... <laughs> This is a I mean, mess. Need is relative. This is a mess. It doesn't need to be like good wheels. It just need to be wheels. Possibly like the old like cosmetic wheels. Like the rollerblades you got when you were a kid, like the wheels barely spun. Like yeah. You moved it and it stopped immediately. Yeah. Yeah. Or it could be like right. wooden wheels. That they don't even have to be like so fancy. And it all comes back to Lego. That's true. That's true. Lego wheels, yeah. Originally. Well, originally manufactured wooden wooden toys. That's true. Wheels. Cheese wheels would also be better with wheels. Oh, yeah. God, I'm eating key lime pie and cheese today. <laughs> <laughs> Ending on a food oh. always. And a side of Dyson Sphere. Woo, almost didn't get it in this episode. Oh. Wow, problem solved. Also, I'm no longer hungry. So <laughs> two birds, one sphere. <laughs> oh. Also, I feel like this makes up for the, uh, the opening. For the intros. I don't think the opening needed an apology.
Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes or Google Play. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at at binaryjazz. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the forum on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.